Um, first, though, um, what with it getting a bit chillier, as Liz was saying, it's down to about four tonight, not anywhere near as cold as it was last night, but certainly, you know, by no means is it cold, is it going to be warm. And during the day, it's pretty parky. I was out with the dogs today and I needed to wrap up. So the government issued new guidance to you if you are slightly older, and I'll lead you to define how old is older. We're starting another winter in NHS England and Public Health England have said, hey, guess what? Eating a hot meal and keeping active are good ways of dealing with the cold. Now, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful to organisations like NHS England and Public Health, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, a decent hot meal inside you, a bit of exercise uh, will reinvigorate you. But however, you see, this is the problem. The advice comes, as figures reveal, fewer than one in five of the councils in the North West are now providing meals on wheels. So it's very well, all very well to say you should be eating a hot meal. But if the councils ain't providing meals on wheels, and this is a big drop from two years ago... What do you do? The people who provide the service say it's a lifeline for elderly people who are often no longer able to cook for themselves. Our health correspondent, forgive me, our health correspondent, Jill Dimium, has spent a day with a local charity. I'll get up the soup now, you see. The daily delivery, which means Nathan Blake gets to eat a hot meal every day. As a full-time carer for his wife, he doesn't have time to shop and cook for himself. It mean a lot because I, I wouldn't be able to to, to do the, the food, you know, um, the food, food you see, that, um, that they provide, you see. The charity also provides a weekday luncheon club. It used to get funding from Manchester City Council, but in recent years, that's gone. And people are now required to pay for, um, the, you know, the service that we provide. And predominantly, if they have funding or support from the council, they can do that. But if they don't, then, you know, they, they will struggle. And that's becoming increasingly common. This research shows that fewer than one in five councils in the North West now offers this service at all. That's down from nearly half two years ago. Nationally, 48% of councils still offer Meals on Wheels, down from 60% in 2014. When you live alone on one ration and haven't the means of cooking your meal anyway, life can be pretty tough. But this problem is being tackled in a big way in Deptford and Greenwich, where the Red Cross serve you with Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels began during the Blitz, when many people lost access to a kitchen. It then became a mainstay of services for the elderly, but the austerity years have seen many of them go. The government says they're giving councils £3.5 billion for social care over the next four years and devolve powers to decide how to spend it. The councils say that doesn't offset other cuts and it's services like this which suffer. Interesting. That's our reporter, Jill Dummigan, uh, Dummigan reporting. Uh, you heard also from Dorothy Evans, who's from the African Caribbean Care Group in Manchester. Uh, we can speak now to Neil Radia, who is chair of the National Association of Care Catering. Good afternoon to you, Neil. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time tonight. Um, I, I heard Jill's statistics, 48% nationally down from 60 in the northwest, um, fewer than one in five providing this Meals on Wheels. This is a pretty dire situation, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely appalling, to be honest with you. Um, Meals on Wheels is a meal provision provided to vulnerable and elderly people within our communities. It's a lifeline for a lot of older and vulnerable people um, and it's it's really quite concerning really that we're seeing such a drop around the country for the Mills and Wills provisions and um, you know we're living in a country with a, a growing older population and as you mentioned just before we've got the winter coming in and less than 50% of the UK providing Meals and Wheels services. A growing older population, Neil, who are no longer being supported financially by a reducing younger population. This is the problem, isn't it? The government is saying we're not getting the money coming in from taxation and the like to support the ever-increasing older population that the local authorities would love to provide this service, but the government just aren't giving them the cash because it's not there. The problem, the problem we've got is that, um, you know, the older generation who we're providing this meals for, they've worked all their lives and they've come to an age where some of them need that extra support. And the Meals and Wills provisions actually enables older people to live, live dignified, live long, longer within their own homes. The money, the problem we've got with Meals and Wills is that Meals and Wills is not recognised as a statutory 
service when it comes to local authorities. So the government are giving funding for social care to local authorities and um, and really we need actually more investment in support services um, and social care services to support some of these services like Meals on Wheels. Um, but the, but, but the local authorities have to make decisions. You, you're quite right, it isn't oh, a statutory absolutely, requirement. They absolutely. have to make the decisions. It's it's the councillors who are sitting around in Bolton and Bury and Rochdale and places like that who are having to make these decisions I, about where they spend their money, Neil. No, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, as an association, we are not solely saying that local authorities are responsible for this. What we are saying is that the Meals on Meals provision is a lifeline for older people and vulnerable people, as you've seen last night and you, we've just heard just now as well. And we, we absolutely understand that you know, money is not there from local authorities' point of view, and they've got to make some really, really tough decisions on what services they keep and what they don't. Unfortunately for Meals on Meals, it's not statutory, so they do not have to provide it. But what we are asking local authorities is that, you know, before you actually start cutting the services like Meals on Wheels, look look around look around and see what other other local authorities are doing around the country. Well, what when are we, they doing? What what examples yeah, can you absolutely. offer to people listening in Greater Manchester? Because I know councillors listen to this programme, Neil. They, I hope they like I to hope keep so. themselves up to speed. What would you say to them? What we found in our... We did some research, um, and you've mentioned some of the statistics this week. Um... What we've found around the country, when we've spoken to local authorities, where local authorities have started seeing their health and social care budgets combine, we've actually seen those local authorities who shut down the services a couple of years ago have actually started looking at reinstating them because what they have found is prevention is cheaper than cure. So actually providing a Meals on Wheels service in the community, the average cost of a Meals on Wheels is about £4.30 according to our last independent studies. And the cost of having somebody being admitted into hospital in the NHS bed is costing us about £400 a day. So with the combined health and social care budgets that we've started seeing emerging across the UK, we've actually started seeing health and social care departments actually talking to each other and seeing how they can prevent people from going into hospitals where, as as we all know, that there is a lot of funding issues. Yeah, OK. I, I, I hear the point you're making and, and I appreciate your time. Um, Neil Radia, Chair of the National Association of Care Catering. I mean, it, it is a sensible philosophy, isn't it? Prevention is better than cure. It is better to make sure that people do not get ill than to have to pay for them when they have got ill. And to hear that health and social care departments are actually speaking to each other is encouraging and somewhat astonishing. And these massive organisations, one arm talking to the other arm is a, is a wonderful thing. Neil, good for you. Good to speak with you and thank you for your time. I mean, the issue, of course, social care, which we addressed the other night, is that we were hearing it on the news yesterday. People in hospital can't get out either because they are hit, they've been treated and they are well and they need to be then treated in the community and the social care provision in the community is not there as well so it's it, it's a really difficult situation to manage at the moment um we will have a an elected mayor here in greater manchester soon one wonders whether uh, he or she will be able to uh because we'll have devolved health care budgets and an elected mayor maybe somebody will be able to get everybody together and shake them and say, you talk to you and you talk to you and maybe we can sort this out. I don't know.